Come in. Ah, uh, Mr. Clayton. Uh, hello, uh, Mr. Rogers. Uh, please uh, take a seat. Oh, yep, sure, thank you. Now, as I'm sure you know, uh, we ask all our in, uh, potential employees here to undergo a three-day uh, lab testing session, as it were, yeah. just to um, sort of understand your general lab practice and see how well you've done at it. And I do have the results back for you here, and I'm afraid there's a few things that we need to discuss. Okay, yeah. Um, if I could just uh, draw your attention to the video screen behind me, we were filming you whilst you were in the labs, and there's just a couple of things that I'd like to show you. Okay, yeah, uh, brilliant. <laughs> Now I can see even from this distance that you are not wearing any safety glasses. I didn't realise I was being filmed. Um, not knowing that you were being filmed is not an excuse to not wear safety glasses. Now if we just fast forward a bit here, uh, also um, I just noticed you spilling a little bit there. Now did you get any of that on your hands? Uh, a, a small bit, yes. And were you wearing gloves? No. Now here we see a trip hazard, and you nearly fall over it. And then if we look at the end of the lab, here you come with your experiment. It wasn't toxic, it, it was absolutely fine. Very and you leave it on the table, and proceed to take a drink without washing your hands. Hardly toxic does not necessarily mean it won't harm you. And you could just have drunk some of it. This is true, yeah. Now let's uh, just fast forward this bit with you using a balance. Now, again, I noticed no gloves and spillage. Did that go on your hand? And so you wipe your hand and your spatula on your lab coat. I didn't have any paper towel to hand and I thought it would be the safest thing to do. To wipe ke a chemical onto your lab coat? Yeah. Now here we see a Bunsen that has not been put on safety flame, it's been left on a roaring flame, and a highly flammable liquid right next to the Bunsen burner. I, I didn't actually see that. Um, I didn't put that Should there. be looking more carefully. Now, this is the next bit. If we just look over here, you have interrupted the experiment to answer your phone. Well, that's fine, isn't it? No. Well, why not? Because if you are on your phone, during a practical, you are not giving the practical your full attention. What happens if it's an emergency? If it's an emergency, a message will be brought to the lab. Hmm. Okay. Now, let's see you uh, just putting something heavy on top of the shelf. Yep, there was light. There was nothing in there. Nothing except for... Um, some jewels of tolerance. Some large containers of solvent on top of a shelf. Do you call that safe? It wouldn't have fallen anyone. And you're absolutely convinced of that, are you? Well, to be honest, not really. Well, at least you turned the lights off on the way out. Well, thank you, Mr. Rogers. Um, I'm afraid that concludes this interview and you won't be hearing from us about this job. Um, I hope that in future you will consider reapplying once you have honed your practical skills. And we would like to present you with this as a leaving present. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always a waste of time. After this interview, Mike Rogers practiced his practical skills, was appointed head lab technician at a major chemical company, and went on to win a Nobel Prize.